to another edition of the Captain's Blog and the last for 2014. You join me in this amazing mild October sunshine on the River Bure heading away from Wroxham on this absolutely fabulous new addition to the Barnes Brinkcraft fleet, Brinks Rhapsody. It's a 44 foot long by 12 foot wide dual helm cruiser and it's based on the Alpha 44 mould but um, that's where all similarities with all other um, versions of this craft that you can hire from different boatyards end. It's first of all completely electric hybrid so as you can see just here there are huge banks all over the boat of high capacity solar panels. Um, I'm going to have to go through so much about this boat over the next few days. Um, it really is a geek's paradise with some of the, uh, the technology that they've managed to fit into this boat. But just for starters, it's got GPS, it's got onboard Wi-Fi. Um, you don't have the conventional rev counter, you've got a amp meter, RPM gauge here, because there is no engine. There's just a generator to supply on-demand power when the electric motor requires. So for example right now we're cruising in near silence. But if for example we cruised for a few more hours and we use enough juice to warrant the generator to come on it will start automatically and it's up here anyway very silent the only thing you really know the generators are running is when the boat kind of shakes when it starts up but once it's up and running it's not intrusive inside and it's not intrusive outside we're heading towards Horning um, and we're hoping to moor either at the new inn or uh, the ferry inn um, it is as you can probably tell just uh, coming in the few minutes that I've been recording this busy I'm not alone, I'm joined with my mother and um, she's come up to enjoy the delights of this craft um, but at the moment she's downstairs um, unpacking things and sticking in the warmth and I'm up here just uh, enjoying the late afternoon sunshine it really is truly mild this October, quite fabulous um, weather so as you can see as the day boats continue to come through um, I'm going to go and concentrate for a moment. I'll be back and I'll talk to you about some of the controls and features up here on this uh, upper hill. So you join me here, as I say, behind us is Sow House Broad. I just want to talk to you uh, through the helm here. Um, it's quite simple. You'll notice there's no gauges for kind of, you know, temperature, oil pressure and, you know, goodness knows what. Um, all we've got up here is our thruster control. Um, for both bow and stern. We can just use the stern, the bow or both. We can go in and out sideways and we really can go in and out of mooring sideways because these are electric bow thrusters and well thrusters not just bow as I said um, and they're very powerful at that too. Other boats of this sort of size if I take an example of the Richardson's RC45 that has a hydraulically actuated thruster system so when you're in close quarters manoeuvring, i.e. coming into a mooring or departing a mooring, you won't have 100% of the power unless you take the engine out of gear and give it some revs and then that will send more hydraulic juice to the thrusters and give you more control. Personally, I haven't hired that boat, so I haven't actually felt what that's exactly like. But I've heard from people who have how it behaves, and obviously earlier in this year I had Brinks Royale, which had hydraulic thrusters, and they do work better with more revs. Here we've got our GPS readout, which is, as you can see, to the decimal point, and the receiver is just there. That is a special TV antenna. And then 
to the right of that we've got our main sort of digital reader as you can see RPM and amps. The reserve power in the battery shows zero because it's not connected at the present time. We're drawing between 47 and 50 amps of power and we're doing 985 to 988 RPM. Now that's all controlled through this very strange looking throttle. Um, it's not obviously connected to an engine because there isn't one. It's, uh, it's basically like a potentiometer. Um, it's a voltage regulator between more and less. It's like a volume control. So it's very precise. It's also very disconcerting because there's no resistance to it. It's, uh, it's extremely easy to slide in and out and I'll just give you an example here. That is neutral electric motor is off, I lift up the button underneath, I push it forward and the electric motor is engaged and now we're running again. So there's no exhaust, there's no smells, it's completely silent apart from the vibrations through the boat from the propeller underneath. That's all the same but there isn't an engine, there's just a big fat generator an electric boat, um, electric motor, and about 18 batteries. The batteries that drive the boat are powered essentially from the generator. So as they reduce in charge, the generator will top them up. So if you're hiring the boat, you still pay a fuel deposit, but instead of just being for the engine and a generator, or just the engine, your, that fuel burn will be used by the generator. Now, when we're moored up, maybe another day, I'll show you the bank of solar panels. Uh, there's six of them, and they're huge. They're the sort that you would expect to find on the roof of houses. Um, I'm not sure of what their total combined um, amp output is, but um, let's just say it's probably a lot. But as you can see, you've got this nice sun lounger here for when it's a, a beautiful summer's day, of course. They are and have been glorious this year throughout the summer. Then we've got this seating area here. If you remember previous to this on these Alpha 44 moulds, this was just deck space. Barnes Brinkcraft had some outside furniture. Other operators have come up with their own sort of ideas. Um, we've also got a seat that could comfortably be sit two and a snug fit could fit three. And that's it really for up here. You've got this non-slip deck surfacing. It's all got lighting everywhere up here. I'll just slow down. That's what is very disconcerting about this boat. There's no change in engine pitch. It's not like, you know, you just kind of get used to, you know, what RPM does what and so on and so forth. With this boat, it's, it's silent. So you're just like, you've got to look at the screen and think, okay, now I've got my, you know, GPS speedo here. We're now down to 3.5. So I'm just going to inch that up just a bit, but it only takes a very little amount, 622 RPM. 650, 698, 702, 707, 873, 890, 901, 3.4 miles an hour, 3.5, starting to build up now, 6, 7, we'll soon be at 4, there we go, I'm just going to ease back down to 800 and 50 RPM and we're heading a steady 4 miles an hour. So, first impressions of this boat is absolutely stunning, really. Wait until you see the inside. Um, this sets the new level as far as um, interior fit out and conveniences, luxuries, technology, you name it. Um, Whilst all the other boat operators have obviously been coming out with new boats such as Herbert Woods and Royale, you've got Richardson's who are going to be shortly releasing their new 45 foot flybridge cruiser and I'm sure they might well have a keen eye on what this interior spec is um, and we'll see which is going to be the better of the, the two kind of thing. But Barnes Brinkcraft this time they've really gone and thought, okay, yeah. That's what's out there at the moment. This is the mould that we're going to use. What can we do different, special? And um, 
they really have pulled it off this time. So they've got a very economical, very eco-friendly cruiser that's very quiet when underway. They've got all of the luxuries you could want. It's got three cabins on this boat. They all have their own TVs. Each one's heated. Each of the heads is heated with a towel rail, electric toilets, full-size showers, you name it. But for now, I'm gonna put the camera down and um, we're gonna see if we can moor maybe at the new inn or the ferry inn. Um, and that's where my only worry is gonna come because um, this is a 44 foot boat. And although I've got my mum with me, bless her, she's, uh, she's not allowed to be sort of jumping on and off boat. So taking my time. And uh, so it's gonna put my Hello. constant. Hello. <laughs> One of my uh, followers there on YouTube, um, Pacific Princess from Pacific Cruises in Loddon. So, uh, hello, you're on the blog. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I've got to moor this boat on my own, which is going to be uh, interesting because, as you can see, it's, it's big. It's 44 foot long and you have to come down the steps at the back. That's a note I should point out to you. There's no internal ladder here down into the inside that all the other um, types of this mould have. Anyway, I was going to go a moment ago. I'm, I'm going on again and stuff. So um, the time is coming up to half past three. It gets dark because the clocks have gone back, obviously. It gets dark around about, I'm not sure if it's four or four thirty, but um, I think be moored by four is the rule of thumb this week. So we've got half an hour so if we can't get in at the new inn we can't get in at the ferry inn then we've got the island opposite the ferry inn we've got Cockshoot Dyke and um, you know a push we'll come back down to um, maybe Sow House or even I didn't check to see if Blackhall's Broad was open I'm never too sure when that's open and closed for the for the season but um, anyway more as it happens So good morning and welcome to day two of the captain's blog. I can't talk too loudly at the moment because my neighbours are still asleep here at Horning Ferry Marina. The wildlife has just woken up along with some of the fishermen. It's 20 minutes to seven in the morning. We're going to be setting off uh, shortly. Um, it's lovely to get off on the river, don't think rude things, um, early in the morning and enjoy the peace and the tranquility. The water's still the people are on their boat still snug in bed and um, you really have the place to yourself. As what we're going to be doing today, I'm not really too sure. Maybe head to Potter Heim, maybe see if we can get under Ladden Bridge. The water levels of late have been higher than normal. In fact, of recent history, um, in the last couple of weeks, there's been a bit of a tidal surge come in. And although that's um, left the Norfolk Broads, along sadly with many fish dead, it was reported, um, the actual water levels themselves seem just a little bit higher than normal. So for now, that's all for the moment. Um, it's a bit strange because this is day two, but it's like the start of the blog. I did a little bit yesterday, but not as much as I wanted. Um, and we literally just came from rocks and came here. It's strange as well because you have very few hours of daylight and very limited cruising times. So I'm used to sort of, you know, being able to cruise and moor up at, say, you know, six, seven o'clock. Um, whereas now you've got to be moored by four, it's dark by sort of half four. So everybody at that last moment is looking around for moorings. It's very busy, it's half term, loads of boats about on the rivers. So it's a bit like summer busy, but with not the summer weather and the, the longer day. So anyway, I'm rambling on, um, more as it happens and uh, I'll wake up a little bit and we'll see what we can uh, film.
So we're just coming along the River Bure as you can see here, it's just like a, a mirror surface. What's very disconcerting about this boat is the sheer lack of engine noise when you're going along. Um, the only way you know that everything's working is a green light on the helm that says your station, whether it's the upper helm or lower helm, is active. And you untie the ropes and you put the throttle forward and all of a sudden the boat starts moving. So the only sound that you may be picking up is the sound of the propeller cavitating underneath the boat, um, the motor whirring. It's, it's noises that would otherwise be drowned out by the sound of a diesel engine running um, and so suddenly become quite pronounced when you're just running on electric obviously. But what it does mean is that you can leave a mooring in the morning silently, no starting of an engine, there's no need to start the engine to warm your water up, that's done by a boiler and I believe also it has an immersion tank. And it has so much reserves of power in its vast battery bank that even boiling a full household kettle of water doesn't mean that the generator will kick in. If you've got enough power it will happily boil the water for a morning coffee or tea, again in complete silence. So the plan is we're going to head down the river to Ramworth Dam and we'll take a right and we'll head down and have a little look-see at Ramworth Broad. And from there, after a brief stop probably, we'll head towards Potter Hyam. One of the things that I've got to be aware of is it's very busy, as I said uh, this morning. Um, you wouldn't think it right now. But um, there are a lot of boats out and there's a lot of boats moored. So, for example, um, all of Horning, apart from a couple of spaces, was completely chock-a-block last night. And I'm sure the same will be um, at Potheim as well. It means that you've got to be quite aware of where you're going, especially in the late afternoon because because it gets dark earlier. And that means that you don't want to be stuck out thinking, oh Christ, you know, it's coming up to four o'clock and I have still haven't found a mooring. And everybody's thinking that. So everybody seems to just moor up about sort of three o'clock, half three, and that's that, thank you very much. We've got our place. Now perhaps in years past this would be, you know, cold and maybe even frosty in the morning. You know, we're approaching November and yet it's another mild day. It's about 12 degrees Celsius outside at the moment and it's set to increase as the sun comes out properly and apparently it's going to be another dry day. And finally one, I'm just uh, having a little chat to you. The other thing you tell a lot with this boat is the bird song. You know, just stuff happening, you know, fish jumping here, a duck paddling there, you know, you hear these things that otherwise all you would hear is Yeah, that, that's my impression of a diesel engine. But you know what I mean. So this is the view from the upper helm looking to the stern, They're just coming down Ramworth Dam here. And although it's no hot summer's day, um, it gives you an idea of the, the seating here. Forgive the squeegee that I've left there to wipe things down in the morning with the, the dew everywhere. This surface here is amazing. This is so non-slip. Um, in fact, it's a shame that the whole deck area isn't covered with this because it's just it's just like, you know, impossible to slip upon. It also looks lovely as well. Some boats lend themselves for easy filming. I can stick the camera somewhere, I can easily reach it, press record when there's a, an interesting moment, a pretty moment, or just that I think there could be one coming up around the next corner kind of thing. This boat, not so much, because um, I can stick the camera 
places of course but I can't do quite as much as I otherwise would so um, I'm just for those of you who prefer the pretty filming of uh, you know going along the river and so on and so forth not so much talking from me or set pieces to nice music and stuff um, might not be able to do as much of that with this boat just because I, I can't sort of sit the camera on the front of the boat press record walk back down get back on the upper helm do a bit of filming drift in mid-river walk back down stop the recording <laughs> so um, yeah you know it, it, it's it's a challenge sometimes um, when you're on your own and although I've got my mum with me for the time being she's going back to uh, London and um, she's, she's alright steering a boat as long as there's nothing else really coming like you know sailing boats for example it's like <coughs> Thank you.
So you join me here on the Broad Walk that we're going to have uh, walking along to Ramworth Broad. It's part of the Norfolk Wildlife Trust and uh, it's like a nature reserve thing. We've been here before with the blog, I believe, when I was on Mystic Horizon. So we see if anything's changed. It was a different time of the year, I believe, uh, when I filmed here then. Um, so we're going to have a little walk-see and uh, come to Ramworth Broad where there's the lookout tower across the Broad. And uh, let's go and have a look. This is Ramworth Broad and of course it is closed to boats and so although when I say we're going to Ramworth and many people say the same actually they're going to Malthouse Broad which is the broad that's open for navigation. So this whole vast expanse of water is owned by the Norfolk Wildlife Trust. This is the information centre, there's a a viewing platform to look out over the broad of various information it's staffed when it's open sadly though it's not open at this time of year but um, it's well worth coming to if you're you know in the area in the in the summer months for example um, it's a really nice walk there's also an area here where you can bring a pack lunch and sit down But at this time of the year, when there is no one here, it's very serene, very peaceful. So it's time to go back to the boat and um, maybe get something to eat. The time now, it's uh, five to nine, so you know, time ticks on. We kind of left about twenty to quarter to uh, seven this morning from Horning. Um, so, you know, this time of year, time's important, short days and everything else. So, as I said earlier, my mum's joined me this time. Hello. Right. Uh, so, that's that. Right, you introduced now. So, um, later in the day, <laughs> no, but she's um, doing the important things of helping me when, um, you know, I'm off afloat. Feeding, you know, unpacking, making beds keeping things nice and clean um, and it's nice to have her company although sometimes there's been periods when I've set cameras up and I've said right okay we're gonna go here and then you've walked right in front of them yes as mums do yeah so um but but I'll forgive you because you know it's not often you're on the broads and it's certainly not often you're in the blog so we're walking back through the broad walk um, towards the boat. Uh, we're going to go, there, there is a section that splits off and goes in a different direction, which is coming up uh, shortly. And then you can exit through a different part of the, the walk, if you like. So we're going to be taking the right hand bend. This is exactly what I did the last time I came here, where I came back this way. But I think it's well worth a visit to uh, to come along here because it is educational. There's signs like this that let you know what you're looking at, which uh, talks about a decoy and trapping the, the ducks. As you see, they would have been led up here and this would have all been the netting and that's what this would have been here, so it would have come to this pinch point. So it's pretty peaceful and informative. And this one of the main attractions for coming to uh, Ramworth Stave is, of course, the Maltsters Pub, which in the winter time has a lovely real fires, good food, 
really nice ambience inside. Recently refurbished, not too long ago. It's not not that recent, but um, if you haven't been on the Broads for a couple of years, it will it will appear new to you, and it looks very pretty here. And as you can see over here, this is the actual stave. That's the post office and the stores. Again, not open all year, but good place to stop off if you're short of a pint of milk or a loaf of bread or you just want to get some gifts, postcards, send, send a letter, buy the paper. There's also provisions for water and refuse. And over here, you've got the public toilets. So you can come here and not worry about filling your holding tank on the boat. So overall, it's a really nice place to stop off. Um, there's also electric posts here, I forgot to mention. If your boat's got the provision of 240 volts and shore power, you can hook up here. And uh, you just use the um, cards that you can buy. Uh, they look like this, they cost a pound. You put it in the machine and um, it deposits a pound credit and away you go. No need to worry about your batteries then. Not all boats because have the 240 volt power. Brinks Rhapsody does but it has 32 amp power which this doesn't have. Most of the posts are 16 amps so just be aware of that as well particularly if you're private owners visiting the broads and you have a 32 amp connection they're not as regular to find as the 16 amp ones. Anyway more as it happens. So here's my mum at the helm. Um, nothing like a bit of pressure. <laughs> Having a bit of a crash course, seeing um, what way's left and what way's right, and how much to tow in it. And So as you can see they're doing some dredging here on the left hand side. Uh, we're on the River Bure and uh, behind us, just around there is the ruins of St Bennet's Abbey and the moorings at St Bennet's which we're all full at the moment. So we're going to be heading round the curve of the river and when we come to the mouth of the Thurm we'll be taking the left hand side. It's quite a breezy day today. Yesterday was uh, very mild and still. Today is a little bit more um, breezy as you can probably pick up on the microphone.
So here we are at the uh, famous medieval bridge, Bosahayan Bridge. And although I still haven't been into the Broads Haven since it changed hands, there's been a lot of good things said about the quality of the food and doing what they can to make that a better place. We haven't got time to pop in there today, we're just walking back to the boat to head off towards uh, the River Ant. Also, the bridge convenience store's just been sold and they've actually got guys in there removing all the shelves and everything. So um, I don't know what that's going to become, but it's in the process of becoming something. So uh, all will be revealed in time. And then just over here we've got the Latham's fish store for all your fishing angling needs. Again, some good things have been said about some of that. But AJB Angling at Ludden Bridge is also uh, a much smaller independent. Uh, with some good things being said about his local knowledge and you know what he stocks so if you're an angler check out that AJB angling at Ludden Bridge and here of course the old Potter Hyam village sign which looks very fresh and nice got Herbert Woods here of course with the day boats we've just been looking at some of the boats for sale over in uh, Waterside Marine Sales um, there seems an awful lot of um, ex boat connoisseurs just sitting ones for sale with an absolutely awful gel coat that needs um, I think it's beyond saving uh, for 60,000 but um, I will imagine that more of those connoisseurs will come on the market in the coming months but as the wind gets up it's time for us to head back to the boat so we're heading off from here at Potter Hyam we'll be heading towards Ludham, hopefully Ludham Bridge by the way, hopefully we'll be able to get under Ludham Bridge and more just the other side uh, because my mum's got to go back tomorrow and then she could just be there and get the bus to Roxham. Um, if not then we're probably more before the bridge on the left hand side where I think you have to use the rond anchors and stuff. I haven't moored there before, I think there's also a fee to pay for overnight mooring. But, um, We'll see where we go and more as it happens. So how have you enjoyed your brief visit so far? I've enjoyed it more than I thought. It's been better than I thought. Um, I like the boat, it's gorgeous. And um, I just wish it was summer so I could um, enjoy the outside space a bit more. <laughs> yes, it is a bit blowy up top sometimes and a bit chilly, but not too bad. It's not as um, mild today as it was yesterday. But... Um, it's not raining and that's the main thing as far as I'm concerned. If it's dry on the boat that's great. Also it's a case of like we've come to here from Ramworth. So we started at Horning, we went to Ramworth, we left Ramworth, we came here and now we're here going to Ludden Bridge. But you see it's five past twelve and in the season I think stuff like I'll spend some more time in Pot I have a look around, blah blah blah. And then I think well I might go up to Stalham. Um, but you know you have to keep one eye on the clock with the shorter days and also the the moorings i've seen a lot of people so far mooring up you know sort of that's it for the day kind of thing early on so um there's not as much movement and the moorings like at potter high i'm all full we've had to squeeze in here in hope woods boatyard as you can see this here is by the way sovereign light um, which is the identical mould as you can see to Brink's Rhapsody but because this has an engine, an any engine on hydraulics so the engines driving this hydraulic pump sends the hydraulic fluid through the hoses to the motor which then drives the propeller so although the engine's stuck out of the way it's outside got some sound insulation there as well of course, that is something, as you know, I'm not too keen on as far as the, the whine of the, the pump and the not as good fuel economy as a shaft-driven boat. Whereas our boat, of course, has no such engine or thing here because we just have a generator, which uh, my mum's modelling the boat there as if she's in the sort of Saint-Tropez. <laughs> but the uh, generator is sort of in this area under here, and that's... Uh, 
force driven vent when the generator's running there's the air hot air comes out of there to vent it and help it breathe obviously and just while I'm here I'll just pop up the stairs this is how Barnes Brinkcraft have done the layout so you've got a seat here no hatch and stairs here a sunbed here and then this circular seating area here with the LED lighting Herbert Woods have gone for a different idea they've gone for a sunbed here and another one there the conventional sliding opening hatch and stairway into the saloon smaller roof lights as you can see no solar panels obviously an outside seating area here now because everywhere where you see a dip that means that underneath inside the cabin you're going to have that much reduced headroom so it's it's all little tiny takes different takes on the same design of boat really the same molding and just different boat yards tweaking slightly different things personally I really like this this classic 44 aquafiber low liner really nice wide decks, low freeboard, low air draft yet you've still got your outside steering position and then all of this space here put some nice solar panels up there so sometimes the classics can be really good shaft driven engine which is under there so you know it's like okay that was the once brand new and great and now this is where we are now in 2014 this is what the latest is so from Herbert Woods where does it happen? so as you can see we're just leaving uh, Potterheim and we'll be heading down the River Thurn and um, I've seen a lot of our type of boats these dual helm 44 foot alphas and I'm suspecting the reason why I've seen quite a lot of these is because they can't get under London Bridge and up the River Ant. Having said that though, I did see Bolero at Ramworth and that came from Richardson's at Stalham so we had to get under the bridge. So um, it, it could be a case of sort of bridge nerves um, getting the better of me. It would be nice to go up the River Ant, I do like that river. Um, but the water levels are higher than normal. But we'll just have to wait and see. It's no good sort of humming and ahhing about it until we uh, actually get within range of the height gauge. One thing that will be interesting is having to undo all of these clips and fold the screens and everything else down. Um, and I think the guy in front of us probably thinks he knows me on that Brinks uh, craft. Uh, I think that's uh, an Emperor, a 48 foot long. If it's not, it's a Symphony at 42 foot long. But um, anyway, so that's where we are, that's what we're doing. I've got the, uh, the old woolly hat on at the moment, as you can see, um, needs must. Um, it's actually now very still. There's a little bit of wind, but it's not too bad. It's certainly not as biting as it was earlier, but that could be because we are not in the open marshland as we were earlier on. So um, I'll know about that when we come around this next bend. Um, but uh, I'd rather steer outside. It's nice to be up high and out in the open and it's not particularly cold. So, um, but I'm just uh, enjoying myself. So anyway, more as it happens. Oh, and by the way, if I don't seem as sort of perky or as, I don't know, talking in the new, usual sense or making silly mistakes and so on and so forth, it's because I didn't have the most brilliant amount of sleep last night and then I was up at quarter past six this morning so um, you know I feel like I'm not all sort of firing on all cylinders and um, I've been mulling over as I've been talking to you guys you know whether it's been in front of the camera or behind the camera that um, I want to do a lot of stuff about this boat because this is a special boat it's a different boat as far as it's sort of electronics are concerned and the interior um, and I know that so far if you're watching this you haven't really you've seen a few teasers of the inside of the boat but you haven't really seen the full extent of the boat so um, I think tomorrow especially when my mum goes home I can spend the day more 
concentrating on the boat, showing you what's it all about and the different things that you'll find and some of the features and so on and so forth. Of course we're going to do the, the boat review, the walkthrough, and looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's a kind of, you know, as autumn comes, we've had the blogs in the summertime when it was hot and sunny, it was hey, and now it's, you know, the change in the air, the leaves are falling, days are growing shorter, the temperature's dropping, it's all slowing down. And so I think, you know, it's, it's fit that the blog should also sort of uh, just slow down a little bit, go into hibernation until next March. Um, which is when I plan to be uh, back on the water. I'll tell you what, between now and next March, it doesn't seem that long, but for me, you know, after a, I'll start looking at websites and boats and thinking about it around about sort of the end of November, and then by the sort of beginning of January, I'm like, oh my god, I'm, you know, I'm having withdrawal symptoms, I need to, to get my broads fixed. So um, I don't care if it's cold or raining or snowing in March. It's, it's a lovely time of year to be on the broads, um, very quiet, um, not all of the boatyards hiring in March, but most of them are, some of them start really in April. So um, anyway, I'm rambling on as usual, I'm either not saying enough, not being perky enough, or saying too much. So as ever more as it happens. So we're just turning now onto the river end. to the bridge and if we can get under then um, we will. I'm just a little bit bothered that the camera mount just looking at where it's positioned may be actually the highest point of the boat. <laughs> so that'd be great wouldn't it? So I've let Melody pass um, but I think what we're gonna have to do is um, I'm gonna check the other height marker because they are they can tend to be a bit out. Um, if you'd set eight foot three, then you know this is an eight foot three boat, by the way, the air draft. But um, you know, it is a brand new boat. Uh, it's a boat I've never hired before this type, so I can't say. Well, you know, when I went under that time, it was you know. So, um, but I will just come up here and have uh, one last check of the height gauge and make a final decision then. Well, we're the other side of London Bridge and um, it actually was a lot of room under there actually but there wasn't very much room for me <laughs> I had to get right down under here almost flat with just me eyes just poking above um, but we're through Ludden Bridge and um, so I know I can get under so now I'm gonna basically try and find somewhere to moor up and um, yeah no that was a bit of a <gasps> shit where's I'm gonna put my head but um, I'll try and uh, reenact later when we've moored up. But anyway, I'm going to spin round to moor up and um, then uh, we will moor up. Yeah. So we made it. So here we are at the uh, moorings uh, for Ludden Bridge. And as you can see, we did make it through. Um, well, not so much the height of the boat, it's the fact that with all this folded down, when you're sitting down, your head's up here somewhere. So um, yes, it, it's better to uh, steer from inside if you know it's going to fit under the bridge then try and crouch down upstairs so to speak and uh, we came in here moored up on my own and um, just goes to show even 44 foot of boat um, you can do it on your own especially easy when you've got the the bow and stern thrusters because I did cheat I do admit it I turned up, I stopped in the middle of the river and I went in sideways and then just stepped off. <laughs> but if they're there, well, yeah, why not use them? So the time is five minutes to two and I'm going to go over there to Ludden Bridge Boatyard and pop in and see Jason. And um, that's, that's all that she wrote, folks. So as far as today goes that's it as you can tell they're very short days you know you get up you do this go there quick stop here and then we're here that means that tomorrow my mum can easily um, get a bus from the bridge um, like Sheila did when she came up on Omega 
and it's uh, well it doesn't cost her anything because she's a pensioner but um, it's a cheap bus ride if you're not a pensioner into Wroxham it doesn't take too long and then Thursday night and Friday night will just be myself no idea where I'm going to go um, other than tomorrow I'm going to head up the river and I want to do some filming as I said about the boat I want the boat to be the feature this time round rather than just where I'm going and so on so that's why I've decided not to do a sort of day one, day two, day three, you know, of the captain's blog as I normally do and rather just do a kind of a little film uh, all in one so this is Ladden Bridge itself Join us here on day three of the captain's blog at Ludden Bridge. It's the day that my mum goes back to London. So for the rest of the day and tonight and tomorrow and tomorrow evening, I'll be on my own, but I've been mooring the boat okay um, without really any assistance. So it's a, it's a proud moment when even the largest of hire boats the rascal can handle. Um, the winds go up on the microphone, so you might not be able to hear me too well. So I'll just come back to you when it's uh, calmed down a little. So as I was saying, uh, you join us here at Ludden Bridge. Um, it's a very mild day, the sun's trying to break through. Um, there is a bit of a breeze, it's not too much, um, but it does come and go. And of course it will be noticeable on the camera's microphones. What I wanted to discuss was, is I've just started the generator on board the boat. Um, not that we needed it to be running at the present time, but I wanted to give you some information about the boat and its features from the outside. And I thought this would be an ideal opportunity just to give you a little bit of a segment, a segue into this boat. So as you can see, it's got these solar panels. There's six of them and um, it's a case really where the boat, the mould, this is an Alpha 44 mould, is kind of the technology of what Barnes Brinkcraft are trying to do is going ahead of what Alpha Craft is able to give them as far as the moulds go. And the reason why I say that is because, as you can see, that the roof line of the cabins and the, indeed the upper helm area there is curved. Now, it would be lovely, wouldn't it, to have those flush-fitting solar panels that bond to the decks and that can be walked over without risk of being cracked or, you know, damaged as much as these aluminium-framed ones. Unfortunately, because of the shape of the deck, and, and I'll show you this up close so you can see what I'm saying, there's these lines here that are moulded in, so this is lower and this is higher. So you have this very uneven surface, and of course solar panels are square or rectangular. So what it really needs is a new mould where the whole deck surface is flat, and perhaps less pronounced curve. And then of course you would be able to put the bonded solar panels on, and then they could be walked over because I'm just worried that one day someone, maybe when they're putting the, the curtain across the, the window, you know, it's a very narrow part where you can stand to put the fasteners on, will, not purposely, but oh, tread on one of these and, and it will break. It doesn't really matter so much up here because, you know, who's going to really be standing up there? But let's talk about the generator. So this is the sound of the generator running, except really what you're hearing, if you can hear this, is air. It's fans. It's not the sound of the engine. There's a huge bank of chargers on this boat that charge the drive batteries and the domestic batteries. There's 18 batteries. There's a 12 and 24 volt system for the domestics and I presume far more volts for the the drive system perhaps you know 48 72 I don't know but a lot a lot of amps and a lot of volts when these chargers are going they're pulling five kilowatts and they generate a lot of heat and there has to be fans to get rid of that heat and that's what you've got down here and you can really feel the blast of air coming out of here so that's the charger fans that are blasting the air out to keep those cool. 
but as we move to the back of the boat here this is where the generator is located under here in this area here and of course the generator itself needs a lot of air to breathe because it's combusting the air it's a diesel generator and it also gets quite warm. Now although you've got to have water cooled just like a boat engine with the exhaust on the other side, this here is another vent which is again putting out vast quantities of, of air. And indeed when the decks are um, wet this whole patch here is completely dry because this is quite warm. It's as powerful as a hairdryer, just to give you an idea. Think of your sort of 1200 watt hairdryer, that's the, the sort of the air, the volume that's coming out of there and, and similar in sort of heat. So if you're moored next to this boat and the generator fires up, this is the sound that you would get. It's completely different to an engine running. It's a higher frequency and it's not that frequency is not going to permeate through to the next door boat. But this generator doesn't just come in every time you moor, oh, got to make a cup of coffee, turn the generator on. You know, let's put the toaster on, turn the generator on. It only comes in when it needs to come in. Now I've put it on manual just for this demonstration outside. You can put it on manual if you want to. Um, but as I say, in normal procedure, in a good day, and because today is very grey, but on a on a summer's day there'd be more than enough solar generation of, of power for your domestic capacity, and only in extreme circumstances when say you've got the oven on, three hobs on, the kettle's boiling, the tellies are on, would then the generator think, I need to kick in to generate more power for the inverter. So I hope that was interesting, just to give you an idea of the noise levels outside the boat. But what's it like inside the boat when the generator's running? Let's go and find out. So now you join me in the saloon of this boat and the generator's still running. So this is how it sounds when you're in here, maybe you're sat down, you're watching the telly, you're cooking your food, you're just sat having a quiet time. Let's just listen. This is the electrical distribution panels. This is where you would uh, control your systems from. Um, you've got your domestic voltage percentage. We're at 97.1. We're 100% for our uh, motor drive batteries. These are our toilet tanks, our water tank, and our fuel tank. These are our emergency battery uh, switches. So no big knobs to turn like on existing ones. Um, this is our system here. It will tell you why the generator started. You see I've put it in manual, but let's say it started automatically and it might say, oh, it's the, because the domestic batteries are low, or it's because there was an inverter that needed to have some power generation for it to work. These are your normal circuit breakers, and then these are all of your switches, you know, for half lights, mid lights, turn off the shower, some pumps, and so on and so forth. That's just standard on any boat. And over here you've got your bilge pump, the heater, the generator, start stop, and the power reset, which is if you stopped the generator when it was requiring to be you know, in automatic mode or it came on while you were underway and you, for any reason you had to stop it, then you would have to reset the, the system. Um, otherwise it would then not come back on again after you had you know, interrupted it. So if it's on automatic, and you stop it, you have to reset the board then start the generator manually and manually stop it and then it will be reset and it will be ready for automatic use. I think you'll find that that is a, a very well insulated uh, experience inside the boat. It's not the same sound as if you had to run the engine on a boat, you know, on a normal, a normal higher boat where you know you might have an evening where it's uh, you've got the heating on and the heating goes out because the batteries aren't up to the job to, to power the heating and you've got to start the engine. In some boats where the engine is underneath the floor it's not usually insulated and it's quite a noisy experience inside and then your neighbours outside because they've got the noise of the engine and the exhaust and all the rest of it. So rather than this being a case of oh it's got a generator that's going to be noisy it really isn't. And in fact the most noisy part of the generator is when you actually turn it off and the whole boat shudders. So I'm just going to go through that procedure now. I'm going to press the generator stop. And there the generator is now stopped. So now that's the difference. No generator. 
So have you enjoyed this boat? I think it's a fantastic bow. I've been boating for over 40 years and um, as far as comfort it, it's it's unbelievably good and the generator, the, the warmth, the heating, it, I, I just can't praise it enough. So there you go, it's not just me that likes this bow, it's all generations, even old pensioners. <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be more later, more as it happens. It's only when you're on a narrow river like the River Rand you realise just how large 44 foot of boat is, especially when you've got to turn it in 180 degrees. But on this boat, with the bow and stern thrusters and the fact they're 100% power every time because they're fully electric, you really can do things that otherwise you might not be able to with a boat with only a bow thruster or even a boat with hydraulically powered thrusters. I was able to turn this boat in 180 degrees in the space between the two banks at Ludham and for regular visitors to Norfolk Broads who are aware of these moorings you'll realise how narrow the river is at this point. Now there was no boats on the starboard or port banks but um, even so I left the, uh, the bank and I was able to do the entire turn um, with full confidence. There was no worrying about oh is this going to work or what the wind's doing. The bow thruster especially, considering the weight of this boat and the size of this boat, is incredibly powerful. I'm not sure what kilowatt or horsepower equivalent it puts out, but um, it really is powerful and I'll show you that um, if I have a chance later on. The stern thruster, it really is like someone's giving you a nudge in the bum. Um, you think, oh, oh, and um, it's brilliant to be able to um, depart a mooring sideways. Um, it's, it's a good toy, the stern thruster. You can do the turning with a bow thruster, but the stern thruster um, is good to have, and you can have them so that you can have the port thrust coming out of the bow thruster, and then you can have starboard thrust out of the stern thruster and just turn like that. I'll show you the control for this, it's a Vita system. Okay, so this is the uh, thruster control as you can see, um, and it is really quite amazing. Um, you've got your, I've turned it off so don't worry, we're not going to be sort of zooming across the river or something here, but you've got your port bow and your starboard bow thruster and your port stern and your starboard stern thruster, or you could do both together to go sideways to the left or sideways to the right, or you can turn it like this diagonally to have your port bow and your starboard stern or vice versa and that's brilliant for being able to turn. Now I don't just rely upon that, I also rely upon what the usual throttle and the steering is doing as well. So it's just a case of sort of common sense and if you're going to be turning, say I wanted to do a 360 in this uh, part of the river, I'd obviously want to turn to my left and I'd put the wheel all the way over to the left, I would then give some power and that would start kicking our stern out to the right and our bow would start to turn left, but of course we wouldn't be able to turn in the length of the river, so whilst that's going on you would then also use your thrusters. Because these are electric though, you can't use them for extended periods and they are not used to steer the boat, that's what this is for. I've seen and heard boats coming round the corners and stuff on rivers and they just think, oh yeah, I just give it a flick of this and a flick of that, what's this steering wheel thing for? The reason is, is these consume so much power and so many amps that basically if you leave it engaged, the motor effectively overheats and the wiring that leads to it is just not nice for them to do. They're just meant for, you know, a brief burst here or, you know, maybe sort of five, eight seconds with just continuous thrust because what will happen is there's a fail safe and it will just stop. It will go, I'm too hot, I don't want to burn up and there'll be a fuse, a thermal fuse that will trip and until it's cooled down you won't get control back again. So, you know, do be aware of that with any boat with electric bow thrusters or stern thrusters. Um, and now the wind's got incredibly powerful on the microphone, so I'll come back later.
I hope you can hear me. Uh, the wind can get up as we know with these blogs, but I wanted to talk to you. It's taken three days really to get used to this system, the way the boat handles and stuff. I've never hired um, this type of boat, an Alpha mold, ever. Um, this is an Alpha 44 mold. If you look at the shape of the hull, um, they come from, you know, centre cockpit, 35 foot, 44 foot centre cockpit, 44 foot dual helm, but the hull is all the ways the same. Whether it's Bolero from Richardson's or Lullaby from Barnes Brinkcraft, it's based on the same boat. The difference though between this boat and all the other boats is in fact actually all the other boats on the Norfolk Broads pretty much. Um, you could say that the day boats for example use this same system, some of the, the electric ones, but the difference with this boat is there's no engine. It's not even an engine with an electric drive motor bolted on the back of the engine with a clutch system that enables the engine to sometimes be the one that runs or the electric motor to be the one that runs. Um, it has no engine. It's just an electric motor and a generator to supply power to a very big battery bank. But what I wanted to talk about was how does that affect the kind of the, the driving of the boat? Well, you don't really have a throttle on this boat, more just a control. And the control is so precise in the speed adjustment that we're, for example, at the moment, we're doing 3.9 miles an hour and we're doing 837 RPM. Now, with a diesel engine, you just couldn't be that precise with how many RPMs your propeller's doing. And don't forget that this has no gearbox. It's an electric motor, a small shaft and a propeller. And that means that because there's no gearbox involved, there's no worry about the maintenance of a gearbox, there's no worry about people slamming on the gears from forward full throttle to reverse full throttle, because after all, in a gearbox, you've got gears and oil and stuff going on to have all of that thrust transferred from one direction to another direction. With an electric motor, it just spins forward or backwards. What it does mean, though, when you're going along is the silence. You can hear the reeds rustle, the wavelets hitting the bank, bird song, all of the things that normally would be drowned out by a diesel engine. But it's not just that that I've noticed. I've noticed the sheer precision that you can control the speed of the boat. Now originally I was a bit sceptical. I've got to be honest, I thought no engine, this funny controller thing and you know, because with an engine, whether you're an owner of a boat or a higher boat, if you're doing 1600 RPM and you reduce down to 1200 RPM, the engine though changes. You know what's happened. You've got your throttle and you know roughly how much you have to, you know, ease back on the throttle. With this, there isn't any note to change because you can't hear the electric motor and there is no engine. So you have to be much more led by what the display is saying rather than what your hand's doing on the throttle because it only takes maybe about three millimeters of movement to change maybe 400 RPM. But because the screen's so clear, it's color, it's like a mini you know, TV screen in front of you, you can just look down 860 RPM, 450 RPM, whatever. And after a few days, you kind of equate what RPM is to what miles an hour. And then you just fine tune it by little adjustments until you reach the speed limit. When you're coming to do manoeuvring though, you don't need to worry about what RPMs you're doing and then you can just completely concentrate on where you're manoeuvring the boat. But unlike a boat that has a mechanical gearbox and a diesel engine, you don't have to worry with this boat about what the gearbox might be doing or anything else. Because what happens is when you go from a head to reverse, the motor is told spin down, spin up in the other direction. So it doesn't crash forward, back, forward, back. It's spin down, spin up in the reverse direction. So there is that slight delay, but once you get used to that, and it's about, I don't know, half a second, if that, you know, I, I haven't had chance yet to try and film some maneuvering with this, but it really is unique. There isn't another boat that's got this system that I'm aware of. Uh, Faircraft Loins have got a boat with a hybrid engine, it's a nanny engine, it's an engine and my understanding is it has an electric motor like bolted onto the engine and some batteries and so how it works is you flick a switch and you're under electric propulsion and then the batteries run down to a predetermined amount that 
clutch releases and the engine starts up and then you have direct drive from the engine to the, the propeller. Um, but there's a diesel engine and it means if there's no power in the batteries, well, that's okay because it's just a diesel engine. They don't have a very long run time because they don't have all of the batteries that this boat has. So this boat doesn't just have like 18, you know, 110 amp hour batteries. This is going to have some serious beefy big batteries. And now the wind has come off the microphone. But you get what I mean. This is very in innovative, is the word. And it's absolutely lovely just to be cruising on. We're just going through Erston at the moment. In silence. I can hear all the water around the, the hull of the boat. I can hear people ahead on the boat that's probably about 100 foot ahead speaking, you know, the kids are calling out. The guy over there who's just banging some wood and metal. There's no throbbing through the boat of the engine or a whining of a hydraulic drive. And it's only after a few days that you sign of, oh, I like that. So I think that whilst there's going to be a lot of old school people say, huh, how much did that cost and what happens when that goes wrong and oh, it needs people to be innovating and trying something and saying let's go for it. Because if that never happened, if Herbert Wood never produced all of his famous light classes of boats with their no wash hull and the the way that the wheelhouse canopy folded down. If Wilds never produced the Caribbean, the Bermuda, the Bahama, the bathtub, we wouldn't have all of what we've got today. It needs people in the marine industry to give it a go. And maybe it will work, and maybe it won't work. But if it works, then you're helping, at least even if you're not saving any fuel, even if the generator used just as much fuel and did just as much damage to the planet using diesel as a normal engine, at least when you're on the river and going along, you're doing it quieter, you're not pumping out pollution and the ducks and the swans, you know, have an easier life. So wh however you do it, there has to be some goodness, even if you can't precisely say, you know, this is 40% better than a diesel engine or 20% greener for the environment. We're coming up to Barton Broad, the wind's going to really get up on the camera so I'm going to stop talking and I'll show you what's ahead of us. I'm not sure of your names, but I recognise the boat and your regular blog viewers, so now you're in the blog with your new boat. We're just uh, heading across Barton Broad at the present time. I've witnessed so many boats crossing Barton Broad heading towards Stalham, um, in the main Richardson's boats, it has to be said. 
And I was going to attempt to go to Paddy's Lane, um, but I'm sure that's going to be full. Um, I've been told that Richardson's yard at Statham is, is very much empty. Um, so there is an opportunity, of course, to stern on more in Richardson's yard, but it's not something I really want to do. Um, because I've only got this for a short break and, you know, I wanted something a little bit nicer. But it's half past two, it gets dark by half past four, and I want to be moored no later than four. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to Paddy's Lane, just give it a bypass to see what's going on up there. And then head back down across Barton Broad and find somewhere, maybe even go all the way back down and moor at London Bridge moorings overnight again. Um, but um, yeah, as I say, it is popular, um, it's very busy at this time of year, um, and the fine weather has brought out quite a few privateers as well, just adding to the sort of strain, shall we say, on, on moorings. So I just mud waited here on Barton Broad, got a few bits from down below, because uh, now I'm obviously, you know, solo helming. So, uh, you know, you can't just stop in the middle of the river to get a drink or get your fleece, etc. But it's absolutely beautiful. The sun, as you can see, is over there. And um, it's mild, it's wonderful. It'll probably be absolutely terrible in a couple of weeks and this will just be a distant memory of the fine weather that we've had. But uh, take it while it lasts. So, more as it happens, I'll let you know uh, where I end up mooring and um, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so here we are on the river ramp. As you can see, there's this area here and all around me here. And I've decided to head back to some civilised moorings rather than wild moorings just because I'm being vain and there's all the leaves and they're all full on the boat and then I have to clear them off in the morning. But it's quiet, no one's about, so let's do a complete turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on our bound stern thrusters with a double tap. Okay, I'm going to put my wheel all the way over to the port side and I'm going to give it a burst for the head. I'm now going in reverse and using my port bow thruster at the same time. I'm now going forward no bow thruster required. Start to straighten my wheel up, turning it to the right. He's right back on the revs. And there we are, 44 foot of boat turned around like that. I can now turn off my thrusters and we're back cruising down the river. So, very simple, controlled manoeuvre. And I thought I'd just show you that because it's not often um, there's a, a period where I need to actually execute a manoeuvre and um, you know instead of just doing it to show I really did need to turn around.
So the time now is 27 minutes past three in the afternoon and we're just here at the moorings for Howe Hill. It has been an absolute pleasure to go up and then down the river Ram on a, what began as quite a misty but mild day and then just after about one o'clock the, the mist went, the cloud went, the sun came out and it's just been absolutely beautiful. Um, and I can see ahead of me there's plenty of moorings there. So I think that this will be the, the place to moor. Now I've got a, an action camera on this side of the boat, the starboard side. The reason why is because this is the side I'm comfortable with to get off because the steps are down there. I've got my bow rope along that side deck and I've got my stern rope ready to go as well. So of course I'm going to have to turn the boat round to come in on my starboard side at the moorings um, and I'm going to try and get you some footage of that happening so uh, let's see what happens if I cock up and go drifting off down the river sideways and you'll see it happen but hopefully we'll be able to do a controlled mooring um, but the first thing I need to do is zip this up and put this up doesn't look very dignified at all. There we go. So now I can see my moorings ahead of me. I've slowed right down now, we're just doing uh, 2.9 miles an hour. If there's nothing coming then I'm confident enough that I'm going to be able to turn the boat um, in the distance between the bank, the formal made up bank of the moorings here at Howe Hill and the opposite reed lined bank. So um, let me spin the camera around and we'll see how this goes. in a bit of a hurry so I'm sure that he's probably thinking about getting to uh, Howe Hill uh, sorry Ladder Bridge so I'm going to come along here I'm going to slow down a little bit faster sorry about the wind on the camera guys but uh, hopefully you can hear me and see what's going to be happening anyway I'm now turning my wheel all the way over to the starboard side and I'm going to be able to kick my stern out. our turn here.
turn is complete. Okay, so we're going to come in just to uh, the front of the steps here. At least that's the plan. Nothing like an audience. So I'm not sure how that came out on camera, but for my part, I was very pleased with it because uh, this is the first time I've moored this boat completely unaided, without any assistance uh, from when my mother was up with me. Uh, she's obviously gone back to London today. But uh, with the, the, the thrusters at hand, just to bring in that few inches, just to nudge, you feel the fenders touch the bank, you think, right, I'm there, we're not moving backwards, we're not moving forwards, we're not moving away from the bank. Step down the stairs, take your ropes, and it's job a good one. Um, it'd be a bit different if this was uh, on the Southern Rivers, for example, where there's a fierce tide that might want him to be snatching the bow out quickly. Uh, you'd have to work much faster then to get off and get a line tied up to keep that in control. But it's another end of another lovely day here on the Norfolk Broads. The time is just 10 minutes to four, and already the sun's very quickly dropping over there, and quite a few hire boats coming through quite fast now thinking well there is space there but um, and and this is always a risk you take even with me thinking you know what's it going to be like if I get to our hill and it's really busy what's my second plan you know what's the plan after that because you've got to have that in the back of your mind how long have you got before the sun sets you can't cruise after dark so I want to be moored up half an hour before it gets dark because then I'm like right it's all cool there's no pressure there's no stress if you're curious about how do you know if you're at Stalham how do you know how long it's going to take to get to say how hill and you might be caught out and it might take longer than you think there's guides online that give you the time that it takes average at a good four mile an hour or you can just work it out yourself um, on every broads map there's a distance guide and you can figure out how long it would take you. And by working out that and the distance time you can come on the Norfolk Broads and you can go to places and you can know you're going to make it in time and there's not going to be any sort of horrible panics. Of course if you come more often you figure out how long places take to get to and it becomes just something that's second nature. But as the sun sets on another lovely day here, the moorings at Howe Hill, Brinks Rhapsody really is proving to be an extremely comfortable boat to live on, extremely easy to handle, very responsive, and once you get used to the silent running and fingertip controls, mooring really is a breeze. More tomorrow.
So it's an absolutely glorious uh, morning. Well, it's almost afternoon. It's 25 minutes to 12. I've just completed the boat review, uh, which I did at the moorings for Howe Hill. I'm now heading down the River Anne, and um, I don't want to be going home tomorrow. I want to be, you know, it's. <laughs> It would be a different story if it was frosty this morning and really freezing cold and I'm sorry for the wind that's probably affecting the audio right now but from a, a human point of view rather than a camera's point of view it's an absolutely gorgeous day. It's the 1st of November today. It's the 1st of November. I'm wearing sunglasses, my sleeves are rolled up, there's a cool breeze, I'm on the Norfolk Broads. What is going on with our climate I don't know but I'm pleased that uh, it's holding out while it is while I'm away. But what happens is when you're on your own, you've got to deal with the boat, the mooring, the leaving the mooring, the ropes, the steering, the getting yourself ready, drinks, provisions, everything has got to be at hand. And it kind of changes your kind of perception of things. You can't rely upon anyone else. No one else is going to be there to help you. And and I, I like that. I like that kind of pressure. Um, at the same time as it's complete calmness and serenity for me. I don't have to worry about, oh, does mum want to go there or does she want to do this? It's just, you know, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to do this filming three times over, spin the boat round four times just to get that shot and not be complained that or said, oh, do you have to do that? I can just do it. And so when I'm on my own, I can really focus on the daytimes as cruising and blogging for the captain's blog and then the evening times is I suppose when it is a little bit annoying uh, to be on your own you know it's a shame you haven't got someone there to talk to and you know, have dinner with and stuff like this so um, increasingly these trips are, are kind of coming away for a, for a break for me but also it's more and more it's bringing you guys along it's 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 the same but it's different every time and I continually challenge myself against the noise of the bloody microphones. So what a terrible view you've got of me down there looking up at me and maybe getting some of the screen in but at least you're protected from the wind. So as I was saying you know it is it is a shame you know sometimes when you're moored up at night not to have someone there company and so on and so forth but there's odd things I do on boating holidays like for example I listen to classical music when I'm on a boat because it seems to fit in with the whole tranquility, chilled, relaxed kind of atmosphere. If I listen to classical music around my girlfriend though, she'd be like, excuse me, that's going straight off now. Let's put on some Justin Timberlake or something. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry Sheila, I know you don't really listen to him, but it was just an example. Um, but basically the point is that I come on these, these trips now, and I do the blog and I bring you guys along, and it's an adventure, even though you're going over the same things, the River Rent, Ludden Bridge, Howe Hill, and so on and so forth. It's a different boat, it's a different time of the year, it's different weather, each time's a bit different. But I've learned also that um, I like the, the, the independence, you know, the, the ability to go where you want, when you want, on your home. Um, you don't have to be, you know, constrained in a holiday park or in a hotel room. And this year I've been away, you know, night here, a couple of nights there to some hotels, some really nice five-star hotels, and they're, they're, they're lovely. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, but even the best hotel, you come down in the morning for breakfast and there's 50 other people and they're queuing up and... It's nice, but it's, it's, and then what we're going to do today, and we go and do what we're going to do, and then we come back to the hotel room. On a boat, it's like today we moored at Howe Hill, which feels completely different to, say, Horning. And then the next day, you get up and you think, where should we go? And it's a beautiful day, and you make your plans, and or not, and you go along, and then you moor up, and you have a different view, a different feel to the place, and you just don't get that on another holiday. Sure, you can go on a canal holiday, on the Thames, Caledonian canals in Scotland, or the European waterways, but boating generally, that's what it gives to you. Now, if you enhance your accommodation to the level of what this boat has, then it, it opens up a whole new world before you, because suddenly you've got all of that, that tranquility and the, the freedom and the exploring and everything else, but then you can do things that normally you wouldn't 
necessarily be able to do on the boat or you'll do on a boat and you think well I just use that for five minutes or oh, run the, the engine darling I'm just going to be using the hairdryer kind of thing you know and it makes you realize this is where the level is now so on boats where you have to start the engine just to get enough juice to start the hot air heating and it might only last for two hours before the batteries run flat and then it's like 10 at night and you've got neighbours next to you and you think well I can't run the engine now because it'll piss them off you know the whole thing has moved along with technology and batteries and capacities and number of batteries and solar panels and everything else as the demands of hirers increase not so much demands perhaps just I want to use my hair straighteners I'd like to use my hair dryer I want to have the microwave you know those kind of things are, are becoming more the norm um, and of course the the usual kind of boats just haven't got the systems in place to really reliably be able to run that because of power because you're off the grid and of course everything has you know an issue yes okay you put generators on boats and then that's more fuel and then people have to pay higher fuel deposits are they willing to pay higher fuel deposits I'm rambling on as usual but I'm just thinking in my head aloud so what I'm trying to say gesticulating with my hands a lot is I do enjoy coming on these these trips I do enjoy doing the blog sometimes at the time it can be annoying it can be like I haven't got enough footage today um, I haven't gone somewhere interesting the weather's not particularly nice I haven't got the angles and yet when I put it all together most of you seem to like them thank you very much I might look at ones and think no oh, that wasn't particularly good I might look at others and think that was really good um, but I try and keep them unique, my own personality and style. People, since I've been doing them, are taking their cameras on their boating holidays more and more, filming their activities, showing little tours around boats. So it's a whole shift to sharing your holidays through social media, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd just share that with you and just, you know, ramble on for a few minutes while I'm cruising down the river. What I'm doing today, however, is very little. So that's pretty much it for as the blog goes, as far as I'm concerned, talking to you. I'm meeting friends for, uh, for rendezvous, for some lunch and a chat and stuff. Tonight, well, it's my last night on the boat, but I've been intelligent. I've done my packing. So I don't have to have any rushes or worries about any of that. But I don't really want to be too far from base and get up at sort of, you know, seven in the morning and think, Christ, I've got to get to Roxham. My only sort of trepidation is, is that Tuesday is not a regular day for, for most boats to come back. Lots of people have had, you know, sort of uh, Friday to Monday or Monday to Friday. So I'm sure that I'll return back to Barnes Brinkcraft and think, where the hell am I going to put this 44 foot hulk? But um, I'm sure I'm sure I'll be able to squeeze her in somewhere. It's been a really enjoyable time, seriously, on board an absolutely fabulous boat. Um, and I'm sure that as time goes by and people hire this boat, they're going to have some really fabulous times on board it. Please take care of it. Remember that when you turn left or right, there's an awful lot of boat behind you. The stern kicks out as the bow goes left. So, you know, do take care of that. Don't come into moorings too quickly. Use your thrusters if you've got them, especially on this boat, and just take care of it. You know, this is, you know, probably more than £200,000 worth of boat here, and um, it's nice when you see them all lovely and new, and it's a shame when you start seeing them with issues. Dings, bangs, cracks, and, and the so like. The so like? That's a new one, sorry. There's a sea cadet being towed by a, a higher boat. I've given up rowing. He said, oh, I'm not doing that, it's too much like hard work. If you have been though, seriously, thanks for watching the Captain's Blog. That's it for 2014, of course, I'll be back in 2015. I'm hoping to kick off the season as soon as possible in early March. I don't know with who I'll be hiring with or what I'll be hiring, um, but I need to take a, a break from hiring. Of course, the boatyards are closed down also need to look after me finances this isn't cheap coming away so often train fares traveling food you know all of the associated costs um, it all soon adds up 
But thanks for watching. There'll be more as it happens in 2015. So from Brinks Rhapsody on the River Ramp. Bye for now.